thanks for visiting my channel thanks for subscribing if you haven't please remember to subscribe today we have that so that so Dapson could come under different brand names, Ma Dapson, River Dapson, or the generic name Dapson. Those H forms will be tablet per aura, will be generic 25 milligram or 100 milligram. Administration is given per aura, can be given with or without food. Magnesium of action. Is a competitive antagonist of paraaminobenzoic acid and it prevents the normal bacteria use of power for the synthesis of folic acid, decreases swelling and stores bacterial growth. Contraindication We will not use Dapson if there is hypersensitivity to Dapson or any components of its formulation. Also, we will not use Dapson in advanced amyloid doses of the kidney. Pregnancy and breastfeeding. We will not use Dapson in total trimester. And why that? Dapson has the capability to displace bilirubin, and that will lead to hyperbilirubinemia and canincteros. You can check my channel for a full presentation on canincteros, already published right there. Also, in pregnancy and breastfeeding, we will be careful because that song can lead to hemolysis and that may occur in infants or the fetus. We can avoid that song altogether if other medications are available. We must stop breastfeeding if it is unavoidable. I mean, if, if, if we must use that song and the woman is a breastfeeding mother then we have to stop one for the other and the breastfeeding must be stopped so as to be able to use Dapson okay however in all these situations consider Mary's and demerits before we use Dapson if at all uses of Dapson for treatment and prophylaxis of hemocystic uroversal pneumonia or hemocystic carino pneumonia in HIV, prophylaxis against osteoplasma gondii and encephalitis in relapsing polychondritis and immune thrombocytopenia. Also uses, which is what many people will be expecting when they hear the word Dapson, right? That is leprosy. Mycobacterium leprae, either posibacillary or multibacillary. Somebody is asking, how do you mean posibacillary and multibacillary? Well, maybe you know more, but you should guess. Post something small, multi something multiple, right? You know more in a bit. Also useful in dermatitis of petiformis, severe afters ulcers, and femfigures vulgaris. So dermatologists will make use of that song. Monitoring. We have to rule out GSPD deficiency before use. Okay. Also, when the patient is already on that song, let's check the complete blood count. We will do that every week for the first one month, then every month for the first six months. And finally, every six months, for as long as the patient will be on that song. Still on monitoring, know what the reticulocyte count is, the clotting profile, the glucose level, the liver function test, the bilirubin, aptoglobin, lactose dehydrogenase, then hemoglobin A1C. Drug drug interaction. I will leave this to my colleagues in pharmacy. So have that report conversation with the pharmacist or clinical pharmacologist. He will be able to guide you on whether or not you can combine that son with those medications you are taking right now or you intend to take later on.
or your physician will get it appropriately. Warnings. There might be massive hemolysis if we are not careful enough to rule out glucose phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency before use. And when there is impaired liver function, we will never use that song. Also, in cholecystic jaundice and hepatitis, there may be a problem. There may be fatal hematological problem or problems like a plastic anemia, agonocytosis, and pancytopenia. Still on warnings, be careful because we may run to hypersensitivity reaction or reactions like Stephen Johnson syndrome, toxic edema necrolysis, toxic erythema, erythema mortiforme, mobiliform reaction, erythema nodosum, or scalatiniform reaction. Still on warning, we may run to peripheral neuropathy and pseudomembranous colitis from Clostridioides difficile or C. Dev or Clostridium difficile if the absorb is used for more than two months. Please treat anemia before you start the absorb, please and please. Warning will not end without emphasis on glucose phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency again because we may run into hemolysis and methemoglobinemia. In anyone with history of sulfur or sulfonamide allergy, like allergy to spacrim, to septra, to septrine, to lasers, please don't use Dapsol, please. Although someone will ask, what's a business? I'm allergic to lasers, it's just a water pill. Why can't I take that song to handle the leprosy? Please don't. False impression of diabetes mellitus control is very possible. And why that? Hemoglobin A1C level will be low. Why will it be low? Because there will be a drop in the survival rate of red blood cells. And remember, hemoglobin A1C is a factor of the red blood cell that will have lasted for three months. Adverse reactions. Hemolysis is likely going to occur, but we can quickly know that that has happened. We might see that hemoglobin level will drop, hematocrit will drop, red blood cell no count will be at the lower end, then aptoglobin will drop, while bilirubin will rise, reticulocytes will rise, and of course LDH. Still on adverse reactions, like I've alluded to before now, we can run into a granulocytosis, leukopenia, and pure red aplasia. And we know all this will lead to serious problems. Still on adverse reactions, like I've said earlier, absensitivity reactions, okay? Severe Johnson syndrome, toxic abdominal necrolysis, erythema multiforming, and so on, can occur. Phototoxicity, increased heart rate, fever, headache, insomnia, even psychosis and vertigo could all be part of the adverse reactions as a result of that zone usage. Now, a big problem. Someone is saying, so everything you've listed on adverse reactions are not big problems? Mm -mm, that's not what I'm saying. Now, look at this. Male infertility. And... This is a new couple aspiring to have their own children and raise kids, but for one reason or the other, you have placed that man on their son. Now they have to be visiting fertility clinics, right? This is preventable, right? Hepatitis, tinnitus, blood vision. Still an adverse reaction. Someone is saying, oh my goodness, so you're not done with adverse reactions yet? Then why would I even take this medication in the first place? Well, we'll go through this. I'm not saying all this will occur in you, but you may face one or more of these possible adverse reactions. Okay, now, non 
proteinuric hypoalbuminemia. Prolonged use will lead to lower motor neural lesion, peripheral neuropathy, and infectious mononucleosis. Oh, still on adverse reactions. Someone said, oh my goodness, I'm not going to take the damn Dapsone. Please take it for you know, the purpose or purposes uh, which the, the doctor is considering it for, right? But just to be aware that you may run into this. Interstitial pneumonitis, pulmonary eosinophilia, renal papillary necrosis, and nephrotic syndrome. Okay, done with adverse reaction, right? Examples of where and when we can use that song. In HIV exposed infants and children, but the child or the infant cannot take cotrimazole, that is Bactrim or Septra or Septrin as the case may be, you can then give Dapsone at 2 mg per kilogram per dose once daily, and the maximum you can give is 100 mg per day, or 4 mg per kilogram per dose every week. The maximum weekly dose is 200 mg per week. In adolescents exposed to HIV, you can give 100 mg per day as 50 mg twice daily or 50 milligram once daily plus pyrimetomy and leucovarin or 200 milligram weekly plus pyrimetomy and leucovarin so you really want to hit the hiv pretty hard you don't want pneumocystic gyrovesi pneumonia or toxoplasmosis to knock this patient down then you go for triple medications. Dapsone, pyrimetomy, recovery. See like, on examples of where and when we can use Dapsone, if there is Tosoplasma gondii, you can use combination of Dapsone with pyrimetomy and recovery, just as we seen on the previous slide, right? But here is the note. Don't use Dapsone alone. In Tosoplasma gondii positive, combine Dapsone with Barimetomy and recovery. Not Dapsone alone, please. Another example is in Pneumocystis University pneumonia in HIV where you can use Dapsone 2 mg per kilogram per dose once daily plus Trimetoprene for 21 days. Now, still with gyrovesi pneumonia or pneumocystic pneumonia prevention in HIV, if the patient can't take cold trimazole, we can use Dapsone 2 mg per kilogram per dose or 15 mg per meter square once daily plus pyrimetamine and recovery. Finally, I know some, you know, once they Google and find Dapsone, they'll be expecting me to talk about leprosy. And of course, I cannot close this presentation without that. So in leprosy, otherwise known as Hansen's disease, if we are dealing with possible bacillary or tuberculoid leprosy, we can use Dapsone once daily for six months. In that case, we combine Dapsone with Rifampin. But if it is multibacillary or lepromatous leprosy, once daily for 12 months, but it will be more than Dapsone and Rifampin who had clofacimine. So we will use Dapsone, Rifampin with clofacimine in multibacillary for 12 months. We must weigh the infants and children before administering our medication while the adults We'll go for full adult dose. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation as for Dapsone, a very good medication to help people who would have contracted HIV and also 
people with leprosy and some other conditions already listed under the uses. But be careful. Take you know, the warnings and contraindications. Thanks for listening. Remember to share this. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember to always rule out GSPD deficiency. I appreciate it.